Welcome back to the Glacier Guys podcast. I'm your host, Ethan Halesha. And I'm Joey Fernandez. And today, we have another special guest. We have Marine Baseball's very own Colin Bolger. Thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to kick this off, uh, Colin's a sophomore catcher slash outfielder. Went to school at Richard, so he's local. And uh, he'll be starting his sophomore season, and I'm sure he's very excited to get started this year. Um, what would you say are some of your biggest differences between like high school and college baseball that you've noticed? Um, probably the game is sped up a lot more mm -hmm. as opposed to high school. It's, I wouldn't say slow, but in college, everyone's bigger, everyone's stronger. It's it moves at a lot quicker pace. Mm -hmm. The pitching's faster. Do you think the talent level is like a huge jump or is it just like subtle? I think there's definitely a huge jump, especially the conference we played in. In high school, it was a good conference. There was competition there, but in high school, or in college, I mean, really, every team we play is solid. It's a solid ball club. They know how to play baseball. They got there's athletes. There's athletes one through nine in college. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, what are, was the beginning of the off season different, like than last year's off season, as far as like training and stuff goes? Yeah, definitely. This year we started a lot earlier. Uh, last year with COVID and everything, we didn't get a start till October right. so with this year we've been going for about three weeks now um it's a lot quicker we had some off-season training maybe two times a week before we actually started full-time but other than starting earlier plays are the same we're doing the same stuff in practice just trying to get ready for the mm -hmm. season mm -hmm. baseball is baseball baseball is baseball <laughs> <laughs> um I've talked to some staff and like just uh people uh, involved in the athletic committee and they said that it's mandatory for students to get vaccinated that are athletes here Does that has that caused any issues for the team would you say or? yeah I'd, I'd say more than issues if issues was a, <laughs> a small word to describe it it'd be issues but <laughs> is it just regards with like players on the team or yeah I mean it was probably 95 percent of the team was not vaccinated before the season started right. and granted now we are like my players, coaches, everybody on the roster is vaccinated because, I mean, we had to do it. It's, uh -huh. it's not what everybody wanted, but it's it's the way it's going. We're going to be restricted without it. So everyone want to continue playing baseball, and <laughs> so we all got the vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sounds like the team's pretty committed to the game. Yeah, no, it's, it's right. <laughs> We're looking for big things this season. It's, it's going to be a fun year. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Uh, how would you say last season went, like, overall? Um, with COVID and everything, it was a little bit – restricted to what we could do as far as traveling and everything and we didn't get to participate in the playoffs because we weren't allowed to travel out of state playoffs were going to be out of state so with that nature we really just had a regular season um it didn't end it didn't end like we wanted it to we wanted to go to playoffs we wanted to compete in the playoffs at a chance at the conference championship even farther than that but would you say that ends i mean that adds any more extra motivation to this year oh yeah without a doubt uh, this year we're all vaccinated we know that we have a shot at the playoffs a shot to go far mm -hmm. so everyone's ready to go from day one it's uh, it's a good culture we got going That's right now a little extra juice <laughs> and you're talking about playoffs and everything so that kind of involves like what would you say are some of the team goals for this year like i'm sure conference uh playoffs and then how far could that possibly yeah go? without a doubt we're just we're trying to get better every day here i'm really not looking too far in the future our coaches tell us all the time be one percent better every day if we get 1% better every day, it's going to build up and, and we're going to go far in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. mm. What are, Do you have any individual goals for the season? As far um, yeah, last year I was I was kind of disappointed in myself, my performance. Um, I'm just hoping to contribute as much as I can this year, uh, whether that be either on the field or at the plate. Just anything I could do to help the team out is going to mm -hmm. be. Is there any specific aspects to your game that you're looking to work on uh, for next year? Yeah, I mean, it's... Really, I'm never satisfied. There's always work to do for next year, um, uh, for this year as well. Even just getting better every day. Mm -hmm. um, there's really, there's really no part of, of my game or the team's game for that sake that we're really A plus dominant, 100 percent proficient in. So, so every day in and out, we're just uh, trying to get better and better. Right. Um, have you guys started off season like practices or anything or meetings? Yeah, I, I'd say this fall season right now is sort of. Our off season is kind of like the spring training of college baseball. Mm -hmm. Really, the games don't mean anything. We're just like, getting guys working, seeing what they could do versus live pitching, uh, see right. what they could do like in the field versus uh, hitters and everything like that. That's, that's probably our off season right now. So, how would you describe like the team's chemistry so far? Oh, it's, it's good, man. Everyone clicks together from day one. Like 
even we had the meeting, the sports meeting, like nobody knew each other. We hadn't like seen anybody play baseball. We all just uh, bonded uh, pretty good, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have, what, what kind of relationship do you guys have, like you and the team with the coaching staff? It's awesome. The coaches are great, man. Uh, lots of different types of coaches on the team. There's old school coach there. He's always hard on us, but it means best for us. Uh, new school coaches are laid back. They're cool, straight up honest with us. It's good. It's good to have the different uh, types of reflections uh, based on the coaches and everything. It's, I'd say the relationship is good. The coaches want to succeed, and we want to prove them that we could do this. So it's, it's good. How many different coaches are there on the staff? There's three coaches. We got Coach Dunny. He's the head coach. Coach Webb, the assistant coach, and then okay. our new pitching coach. Uh, what's his name? I honestly I can't remember. It was his first day of practice yesterday. He oh, was okay. he was playing professionally, so he just oh, really? <laughs> he just hopped on now. Yeah, I I can't remember his, his name. His first day being yesterday is understandable, I guess. Yeah. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was about to say he was your coach last year too. <laughs> or, <laughs> uh, yeah, I met Coach Webb last year writing a story for the team. He was he seemed like a pretty cool guy. So Yeah, Coach Webb's a good guy, cool coach. He's always always trying to help out the team, always trying to uh, yeah make us better uh has covid made practice more difficult or has it been pretty easy to adjust it's been easy especially with the vaccine there's there's really no restrictions uh no mask as there were last year okay um no social distancing really okay really we're just out there playing i mean we're on the field where and you you guys had pods last year correct you, right we pa- uh, we practiced in pods last year um Maybe six guys to a pot, I think. We mm-hmm. were socially distanced, mask on during practice, at games, traveling, um, in the dugout, everything like that. So no masks, like, practicing in the dugouts? No, um, it's, it's, it's nice to have that. We know everyone's yeah, vaccinated. We're all protected against it. So it's, mm-hmm. it's nice to have the freedom to move around without the mask, not be taking it down to drink your water, to catch a breath, everything of, of that nature. It's right. good to hear. Uh, and then the, do the coaches have to wear masks as well or no? No, the coaches are vaccinated too, so... What applies for us as players is would be the same as the coaches gotcha. too. Okay. Interesting. So, is do you know if that's the same case? Like, if you guys were inside, or is it just because you guys are outside? I think I, I think when we practice inside, um, we might have to wear a mask. I know when we come in to see the trainer, our, our mask got to be on just because okay. we're indoors. Mm-hmm. Really, we haven't been inside practicing much at all, just because mm-hmm. it's. It's the fall. The weather's nice yeah. out. <laughs> right. um, Still nice out, at least. <laughs> yeah. until, that, until that winter we- weather. Yeah, until the winter rolls <laughs> around. It's, it might be a little bit different story with the mask. <laughs> Good old Illinois. Everything yeah. like that. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Um, do you personally plan on continuing to play baseball after Marin? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I want to play a, a baseball as long as I can. I've been playing forever, so... Mm-hmm. As, long as, as long as I know in my heart and my mind that I'm done playing baseball, I... I can't play anymore. I want to play as long as I can. Mm-hmm. Do you have any schools in mind? And then I know you guys gained like a year of playing, so maybe right. you plan on staying here. Like, Yeah, we did gain a year of eligibility for all the freshmen last year just because last year was really considered a, a full season mm-hmm. with yeah. everything going on. But I haven't really looked into schools specifically yet. I got to get us to some, uh, some showcases, see coaches that want to uh, see me play, come out to the game, see our team play, and, mm-hmm. and something to go from there. It's good. Yeah. yeah, good to hear. Um, I think that should do it for Marine yeah, baseball. Uh, yeah, I think we covered all the bases. I mm-hmm. would say. Uh, now we can move on to some professional baseball. Um, I know Colin, you you uh, dabble in some baseball yourself. Yeah, yeah, I follow baseball. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I'd say it's pretty safe to say. Yeah. Uh, I I I want to start with personally the uh, the wild card races. Uh, like because I think that's the most interesting thing in baseball right now. Uh, with the AL, you got teams like the Red Sox, Blue Jays, Yankees, and Mariners, who are literally all fighting it out right now, and nobody's safe. I just love that race. it's coming down to the wire like yeah. this, you know. Because most of it's the AL East, and the Rays are so far ahead that no one's going to catch them at this point. So it's basically <coughs> four teams fighting for two spots right now and it's it's just so odd though the rays like you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. at the beginning of the year I, we knew they were a good team but it's like yeah they're, I don't the, know. they're the kings of development and then diamonds in the roughs yeah honestly literally uh i mean the red sox they they've they've always been known to have their their killer lineup uh especially lately but their pitching staff has i would kind of i kind of want to say overachieved but at the same time they've been solid for a full year so you can't really say much 
besides mm-hmm. they're just solid, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with that, the Giants, too, are switching over to the NL. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, nobody thought the Giants were going to be what they what are this happening? year. What is happening? The entire <laughs> season, like, they've been hot all year. Everyone's like, all right, they're going to fall off. Like, <laughs> like I'm going to come back in, like, in like July and then August, September. But they Literally. just – I don't know what's <laughs> – it doesn't make sense. No, yeah. A lot of the – like, a lot of their performances – uh, on the on the hitting side, also, are just like uh, veterans who just kind of had a resurgence all at the same time. Yeah. Like Buster Posey, Brandon uh, Crawford, even Brandon Longoria Bell. when he's yeah. healthy. Uh, exactly. Like that's literally like four or five guys in their lineup that are old, but somehow just all of a sudden went back to their prime. Huh? And with <laughs> the addition of someone like Chris Bryant, you know that's going to be huge come playoff time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he's got the leadership in the clubhouse. He- like even though he's still young, he knows what it's like to be in the playoffs. He knows yeah. what it's like to carry a team like that, and brings that pedigree. Yeah, exactly. for sure. That's that's definitely huge for the for sure. Yeah, Giants. I mean, they they definitely can make some noise. I, that's not something I expected to say in April. That's for sure. No. But I mean, now you really can't deny them. I mean, they have what ninety four wins. Like that's ridiculous. They're ninety five so. and fifty right yeah. now. Well, even better. I mean, <laughs> it's like insane. Yeah, I, literally I mean, insane. And a one eighty seven run differential. That's <laughs> <It's> absurd. <laughs> Um, yeah. Do you think they're going to hold on to the division, or you think the Dodgers are still yeah. going to give them a run for their money? There's about, like, what, 20 games left around, a little more than 20 games. So it's like, I mean. They have a two-and-a-half game lead right now, but yeah. I, I, I see them hanging on. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, me too. I think they're just too solid. I know they have a few series against the Padres left still, but also the Padres have been scuffling too, so yeah, it's kind of like. They've been underwhelming. Like I mean, they've had a lot of injury issues, but it's just like. Yeah. yeah, how much of a threat really are the Padres at this point? Exactly, you know? and the, I don't. I don't think they're. I mean, they're still. You know, they still have some guys in the lineup that can make <laughs> some noise, but it's like. Yeah, I, don't know. I know you, Colin, as a as a Cubs fan, uh, probably hate to hear this, but how do the St. Louis Cardinals just continue to weasel themselves into the playoff race every year? I look at the. <laughs> I look at the standings at least twice a week, and every day it seems like they're moving up. First, it was Cincinnati there. The Cardinals were there. And if it's any team I don't want to see, it's it's going to be the Cardinals. Oh, so I, I don't I, blame you. At this point, it's, if it's Wrigley North with the Brewers, that's that's fine. But the St. Louis Cardinals, I I don't want to see the them The bane there. of your existence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I I, I just have that Cardinals feeling. It comes around every September. It feels like they just all of a sudden, oh, they're, wait, they won just, five straight. <laughs> they're just there. <laughs> yeah, they were every literally year. like five and a half out like a week ago, it felt like. But all of a sudden, <laughs> they're, they're like, just, eh, I'll start trying right now. With <laughs> yeah, the week all left. it takes is really a little bit, a little yeah. stretch to get going. Yeah. And yeah, and it's not like they're the most talented team either. Right, they're exactly. just literally just kind of find ways to win games. I think they have a negative run differential. Yeah, that's right. It's it's the Mariners so and the Cardinals are the only two teams with negative run differentials that are like in the playoff hunt right now. Oh, you said the right. Mariners too? Yeah, they're uh, two and a half or three and a half out of the AL wild card, okay. which is pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how that's happening either, but I mm. mean, Kyle Seeger is leading the boys. <laughs> I mean, I whatever uh, works. You they know? traded away their their best reliever to the Astros and still have kind of chipped away the whole season. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the Cardinals too, I gotta say I can't stand seeing John Lester in the Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I bet that's something you really can't unsee. He I'm brought so much to Chicago and just seeing him go to uh, yeah, <laughs> seeing the, the Cubs rivals. Is <laughs> I I hate to I hate to like open up a wound right here, but what would you say was the hardest departure just from the Cubs kind of retool? Anthony Rizzo. Yeah, Anthony Rizzo without a doubt. It's it's a guy you look at him. It's it's a guy that should have a statue on outside of Wrigley. Exactly, he put the C <laughs> on his chest. He, He's done everything for the city, for the organization, for the fans. It's mm. it's sad to see him go. He's he's my favorite player. He still will be, but I just that's just brutal. I thought he'd be in a, a Cubs jersey f- uh, for the rest of his life. Yeah, and we know it's a business. He's he's gonna be a free agent after next year for sure. We'll see if they could bring him back, bring either KB back. I along think with it's. That. I've never seen it where like it's so interesting that they're talking about possibly bringing Rizzo, Baez, and Bryant back all at yeah. some point. Like after getting rid of all of them, th- there's like serious talks about bringing yeah, each yeah. of them that's, back. That's how you know they really had some camaraderie there. You yeah. know, like even if they leave, they'd still be willing to come back, even on the terms that they left. Because at first I saw it was like Baez has a good chance of coming back, but then I mean Chris Bryant was on um, uh, Redline Radio. Yeah, he was on Redline, and he was saying. He'd, he would like love to come back here and everything yeah, and it's he, like not out of the possibility yeah, that he could make a return he uh yeah he stressed pretty heavily that uh everything like about him being like a west coast guy and that he didn't want to be in chicago and all that stuff was pretty much a rumor like he he loved it here you know 
I mean, you, mm-hmm. you even can see it. He couldn't keep the tears out of his eyes every time yeah, they brought was, him up. So yeah, that hurt me. That was emotional uh, for him, for the fans. It was a sad scene. It played out the way it played out. Yeah, yeah I mean, for sure. I honestly, if I was a Cubs fan, though, it's like you guys got your championship. You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. I mean. Can't complain. But yeah, we wanted something a little bit more. I mean, we had great playoffs runs, don't get me wrong, but the one championship, everyone's saying Cubs are going to be a dynasty. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Two, three championships. But, I mean, 2016 with that, the 108-year curse, whatever it was, mm-hmm. and that went in, I don't know, I think we won 111 games that season or something. It was it was a special season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I just think it was a few free agent signings and uh, decisions yeah. with the money is probably that derailed it a little bit. But also, I mean, you can't you can't be mad at it. It's all no. hindsight. What was no. it, three straight NLCSs? Uh, something like that, I believe. Yeah. Uh, it was at least two straight. Because I know they, they lost to the Mets the year before. When the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah Mets right. In 2015. Right. Right. Yeah, 2015. Tw- and then 2017, they went to the CS again and lost to the Dodgers, correct? Yeah, yeah. I think so. So that makes sense. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a good three-year stretch right oh, there. Oh, yeah, you know? definitely, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you yeah. can't. It's a golden era of Cubs baseball, like I said, with uh, with Baez, uh, KB, and Rizzo. It was, uh-huh. and they brought everything to Chicago and just seen them go. Yeah. yeah. Now, now the lovable losers are back. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, our roster right now is uh, some individual performances are looking good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Patrick Wisdom. Schwindel. He, he too. just tied. Yeah. Uh, Frank Schwindel. It's <laughs> it's great, man. Coming I mean, out of nowhere. What were you saying about Wisdom? He tied. Uh, he tied uh, Chris Bryan for the rookie home runs, I believe. Yeah, for oh, wow. Cubs, yeah. And he I, started late, too. He was on a, a tear for a while. Yeah. I think he started in maybe may yeah he didn't, started in may or something yeah he didn't really get consistent playing in time until june but he he came up in may though yeah yeah thank the st louis cardinals for him <laughs> seriously yeah. and then ortega he hasn't been bad either right? no nah, he's been he's been solid uh i mean he hasn't he i think he has it around an 800 ops so i mean you can't really go wrong with him he made his debut in 2012 so that was kind of crazy but i mean yeah there's a lot of kinda, a lot of gap years in there yeah they they take a while to figure it out but I mean, he's he's been solid. Um, I mean, look at Yerman. It took him a while to figure it out for a couple months, right? <laughs> and then he unfigured it out. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's I, – I don't know. Who knows, though? I mean, some of these guys could stick around from when – I mean, for the next time that the Cubs are good. Yeah. I mean, whenever that is, but – Yeah, like, it's, it's – it's not 2012. I think we're going to rebound a lot quicker than we did in the. L- oh yeah, definitely. Well, they, they're the calling it a retool. You yeah, know? Right. it's not really a rebuild. And but. and they built the farm up pretty quickly uh, with the guys that they got from uh, the departure of the big three. Mm-hmm. So I mean, and they got Nick Madrigal, who's a, a proven commodity already. So mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm excited to see him play. Yeah, he's a he's a really solid player. I think Cody Hoyer. I mean, yeah. not I, a bad like pickup. Yeah, he's been doing really good with the Cubs. I know on the White Sox, he. I mean, he had good stuff. I don't mm-hmm. know if the command was there. No, I know his yeah, ERA was. Exact, that's exactly what his problem was. Yeah. Uh, he's always had great stuff though. Uh, that sinker is just disgusting. So, I mean, I I have faith in Cody Hoyer also. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think you guys could potentially also speed it up just by spending money eventually. Yeah, for sure. I think if we get a. Uh, maybe a bat or two and a pitching arm this season we're going to be well off for next year competing yeah for, exactly um at the least a wild card spot mm-hmm. yeah and then you guys get some solid prospects like brennan davis right yeah uh, he had uh he had two, two home runs in his uh his first two triple a at bats that was yeah I, and he's he's solid i like him a lot actually uh he can play a few different positions too uh i think he's a building block and you guys got like ed howard and braylon marquez so right yeah, you got some you got some solid pieces and, and as, as scrappy as the division is it's it's not like insanely good you know what i mean yeah. i could i could honestly see the cubs like fighting for a wild card spot next year yeah i i i definitely agree with that uh the brewers have a great pitching staff don't get me wrong but their lineup also isn't that strong it's, pretty, it's so, a little spotty for sure so i could definitely see the cubs rebounding pretty quickly and uh and then i don't know how long the cardinals are gonna be able to keep just weaseling their uh, way in. i know? mean i don't know <laughs> I, I really don't like a lot of their players i'm not gonna lie so i i don't see much upside for that team so i i think the the cubs are a lot better off long term oh yeah i agree 100 percent so. uh so do you want to move on to uh, the other chicago team um oh the white Sox. yeah yeah um you know i've never heard of them 
no complaints right now. That's all I got to say. That's, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, they, I mean, there's always things to like nitpick, but you know, yeah, they've been, they've been cruising lately. Uh, <coughs> Tim Anderson returned yesterday. Uh, Giolito returned yesterday. Uh, I don't know if you saw or not, but uh, the home run Giolito gave up to Jared Walsh yesterday was kind of hilarious. Well, the one where he just stretched his bat out. <laughs> yeah, he hit yeah. The, it was I like was a texting one-armed your brother about it at the time it happened. I'm like, how did that ball leave the ballpark? <laughs> he literally just stuck his bat out there. Like, yeah. It was under, what was that? I think it was three ninety eight to right field. Yeah, it was, it was nine. It was I think it was ninety four, ninety five miles per hour off the bat. Yeah, it's just <laughs> so brutal. It was yeah, it was pretty funny. Uh, he looked pretty nasty though. I'll give him that. Uh, he he uh, his stuff was there for sure. He had eight mm-hmm. Ks in four innings. So, I mean, I'm not too mad. Uh, no, he, same. He was and on then, a pitch count anyway. So. And then speaking of, I mean, home runs that actually left the ballpark. I mean, Roberts and then Sheets. I mean, his almost <laughs> made it onto the concourse. Yeah, uh, there's some there's some real power in the lineup. I mean, I'd say. Luis Robert. He's just, I don't even know what to say. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's. I mean, he's a superstar in the making. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, the only question about him is whether or not he'll walk that much but i mean he's taken pitches like exponentially better mm-hmm. than his rookie season so i can only see it going up from here same and he's already a gold glove outfielder so oh yeah like, no know. doubt about it he's a top three defensive center fielder in baseball next to byron buxton and maybe like a kevin kiermaier or something like that mm-hmm. but yeah i completely agree um i mean the only really complaint you could kind of have is that the back end of the bullpen has been a little spotty yeah uh i mean craig kimbrell ever since we acquired him from the cubs has been a little shaky but at the same time he's got the stuff and he's proven so i i'm not too worried about it Mm -hmm. i'm not sure how you how you feel about him yeah i mean it's i feel like something has to do with uh, the change of scenery i don't know if he's pitching as much in the ninth no he's not the eighth is he in the eighth a lot yeah Yeah. he's basically always in the eighth most i mean yeah that could it could kind of mess with the guy. Baseball is a huge routine sport. You want your oh, superstitions no flowing and everything like uh-huh. that. And with a guy like uh, Kimbrell, he's like he's got the stuff. There's uh, there's no doubt about that. I think once it reaches the playoffs time, he should turn it around. Maybe yeah. a little bit before, just to get in the flow of the rhythm of everything. But I got no doubt that Craig will uh, yeah uh, produce for you guys within the uh, off season or n- not the for playoffs. Sure. Yeah. I, I just think because he's been there too, like postseason yeah. play. You know what I mean? Like right. he'll yeah, he'll find intensity. his way. And I also think that uh, I'm I'm kind of happy that they did it right away. Like as soon as they acquired him, they immediately started putting him in the eighth inning because mm. it gives them time to adjust. Because say we we tried to figure it out, like uh, decide who's going to take the ninth, and we kind of flip flopped over and over. And like he we don't set it till like right before yeah, the playoffs. Yeah, he would have never gotten to a groove. And these kind of outings may happen in October instead of early september late august you know Mm -hmm. when it actually when it doesn't matter as much right so i yeah and then i also want to announce the magic numbers officially at seven so at we could actually officially clinch this week if all goes well Mm -hmm. if the indians keep losing like they uh, like like they have they've definitely been helping us out you know oh yeah (laughs) the indians have just been i mean the indians aren't very good so (laughs) the fact that they're even a second place team in baseball shows how sad our division is yeah our division is pretty sad you uh you just play who you play, I guess. <laughs> How about the Twins in the last place? I mean, people had them winning the division before yeah. the season started. Uh, <laughs> I saw, yeah, a lot of Twins fans saying uh, Matt Schumacher and Alex Colomay were going to make the difference in the offseason. <laughs> a little quiet now. but Here they are, 18 games under 500. <laughs> yeah, that's a joke of an organization right there. They've been in the playoffs. I don't know. I don't think they've... Like yeah. won a playoff game since 2004. Has it been since really? 2004? Yes, yeah. they've been in the playoffs multiple times, but they have. Oh, not they're won the a team. They just keep getting swept, right? Or they'll yeah, lose they the wild card. Swept. Yeah, they literally haven't won a playoff game in what is this six, seventeen years? Oh my gosh! Yeah, 2004 was on the team then. Joe Mauer, maybe. Yeah, Joe Mauer, maybe more. No, <laughs> that's <laughs> unreal. Johan Santana. <laughs> That is unreal. Yeah, it's pretty uh pretty brutal. I uh-huh. mean, classic Minnesota sports though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't I say think that. I mean with uh, if Mankata got on base yesterday, what is it? 25, 25 games in a row now. Yeah, and then Grandal's at twenty nine games. Wow, that's yeah. Uh, it's the second and third streaks in baseball uh, behind Wander Franco, who's at like forty now. Maybe yeah, he's at like forty five or, or something. Yeah, something Christ, crazy. He's a rookie. Yeah. yeah, I know. He's he's the youngest player in baseball. Tw- yeah, right? he's like. 20 or something like that yeah he's yeah he's he's ridiculous i mean he had an 80 grade hit tool in the minors so i mean he's kind of proven it now <laughs> yeah i remember he started off like a little slow when he first came yeah, up and yeah. people were worried i'm it like took him, 20 year old dude it took like, him like just give him a little bit of time two or three weeks to get adjusted i'd say to 
major league pitching, and then and all of a sudden he yeah. just hit the ground running. <laughs> yeah, I mean seriously. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean the Rays like the Rays needed any more help, right? <laughs> and then just adding a superstar to their lineup mid season. There was a lot of people though, like uh, critiquing Moncada this year, and just for him to kind of yeah. start heating up now, I think is so important, especially yeah. right before it's the playoffs. Good. I, I like it a lot. And uh, twenty nineteen, him and Eloy also had uh, big September's too, so mm-hmm. it's uh, nice to see that they uh, they like doing that. I mean. Eloy slowed down a little bit, but Mancada at least. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah. I. Besides that, I. I, I want to see us hopefully pass the Astros for the second seed in the AL. But uh, besides that, there's not really much else to say until October comes. Yeah, exactly. We're kind of just like you said. We're kind of in cruise control right now. So. For sure. Just trying to get everyone healthy. Yeah. Just trying to keep everyone healthy. Every time we get hit by a pitch, I'm like, I have a heart attack. <laughs> and then Eloy yesterday robbing the home run. He was laying on the ground for like five seconds. I'm like, please. The no. only web gem, he'll, web gem he'll probably ever have. But the scariest play I've ever seen in my life. I was, so. dude. I was had a mini <laughs> heart attack when I saw that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I want him doing that when we're up six runs in like the top of the seventh. Against the Angels, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, um, they're, they're, they're all the pitchers that throw in beach balls. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we can move on to some NFL. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so we'll the Bears, some Bears talk. The Bears were on Sunday Night Football and they played um, a common foe that they've they've seen over the years <laughs> in, in, in Matthew Stafford, and uh, he actually has a supporting cast around him now. Mm, and yeah. um, Let's see how that went. <laughs> we uh, we kind of we got exposed, I'd say. Uh, yeah, to say the least. Um, <clears throat> I think that's an understatement. Yeah. Uh, the defense really did not come to play. Uh, no. They're they're still playing preseason week two. Uh, they basically we basically sat the starters because not many of them moved much anyway. So Eddie Jackson was horrendous. The secondary overall was just I don't know what was going on. Yeah, it's a tough look. Um, I I'm usually an Eddie Jackson truther, but me too. Uh, there's not much for me to really say here, uh, especially with the, just the the attempts at tackling just aren't even like there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, the coverage issues, whatever. I know he can cover, but at the same time, like how how do you not even attempt to tackle? I don't understand. Yeah, it's just it didn't make sense. I think the offense with Andy Dalton, I guess, it was okay. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it it wasn't great, but I think the only standout performance for us was David Montgomery. I mean, yeah. just the 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 yards after contact, the touchdown run he had when literally nobody blocked for him. Yeah, I know. He had like five guys he, trying to tackle him, and he just muscled his way in. Yeah, he was he was breaking tackles from uh, defensive linemen. He was breaking tackles from corner safeties, linebackers. He was breaking everyone. And that's tackle. carried on from. I remember his last season in college. He had the most broken tackles in the yeah, entire was, like Division One. That so. was like his mantra in college was mm-hmm. breaking tackles. Uh, he did, he never really had all that breakaway speed. I mean, he's not slow by any means, but he was always just the guy that was gonna get you five yards of carry no doubt it's just know? with Matt Nagy I just I don't understand he I, he I think he's way too comfortable in his position right now because he's like well yeah. I promised Dalton would start you got a guy like Justin Fields though like he yeah. was in for a couple plays you that, see the dynamic this guy has that gives me the feeling that uh he was he was promised something also if he's that comfortable you know what I mean oh for sure for sure and then even with him saying that he wanted uh, Montgomery to get 25, 30 carries a game, what did he get, like 17 only? Or um, I know it wasn't as much as he said it was going to be, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it was – yeah, I don't know. He – um, <laughs> he. I would say he he did a good job with the run game. I mean, we got behind so quick it was a little tough to do it. Right. But at the same time, uh, we kind of played into the Rams' hands, hand a little bit because uh, they a lot of their defense is just – taking away the deep stuff and <coughs> letting like letting you just go underneath mm-hmm. but it's like they just that's just the kind of result of them knowing they're you're not going to be able to stop them on offense so they'll just let you waste as much time as possible and take your points but it's going to be have to be a long grueling drive and you're going to have to earn it you know yeah montgomery had 16 carries for 108 yards and i know he had that one big run at the beginning of the game but 6.8 yards a carry i mean that's still that's really awesome. good yeah, and that's then great. one reception so I mean, you got to put it in the guy's hands, I'd say, at least like 25 times a game. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I think I think the defense gets the blame for this game. I'm not going to lie. I agree. Uh, I think there's too many missed assignments, too many blown coverages, and too many missed tackles. Uh, that's plain and simple. Like, we mm-hmm. just didn't really do anything, right? We didn't get much pressure. 
Uh, I mean, we had that one sack in uh, their own territory, and that was all I can really think of. Yeah. That was a positive defense. I mean, the Rams are no pushover team, especially with, no, uh, yeah. with a much better quarterback going from Jared yeah. Goff to Matt Stafford. But you can't get – I mean, if you want to – you know, the Bears call themselves a pretty elite defense. So it's yeah. like – don't get me wrong. I think the Rams are definitely one of the best teams in the league, but mm-hmm. at the same time, you, you still want to see a better performance than that, at least effort-wise. I mean, right. if they're just getting flat-out beat, then that's a different issue. Yeah, right? it's, it's it's definitely one thing to get beat, but to be beat on national TV on a Sunday night football, it just it leaves <laughs> a bad taste in your mouth and everybody watching them. Yeah, like mouth too. I have a gripe with the NFL for even putting us in that situation. I just, <laughs> it's just like why with I don't like having everybody in the nation watch Andy Dalton start for our team while Justin Fields is on the sideline looking like a sad puppy wanting to play. It's just like <laughs> there we couldn't have made that worse for ourselves. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I feel like the whole nation just likes laughing at the Bears sometimes. <laughs> and, and I don't, just I go don't on blame Twitter. Them if I, just making fun if of the Bears. If I wasn't a Bears fan, I'd probably be doing the same thing. Yeah, there was the good old Mahomes. Watson jokes before. And was there a? Those don't get huh? oh, 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 I'm saying I like you were before, before the game. Yeah, no, no, no. Before like you know, past years, and now was now there's the Justin Fields won't start jokes. So that's just I'm just gonna keep carrying on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it doesn't help. Matt Nagy is a McDonald's uh, <laughs> a McDonald's commercial going on now. <laughs> All right. Like literally seeing that, like him all happy go lucky uh, with the McDonald's sponsorship uh, a day after they get smoked on national television, <laughs> definitely doesn't help. But Ooh, let that happen. Cool. I don't know. They probably should have aired that after a win, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, I don't know. I just, I, I just don't see Nagy or Pace sticking around for that long if this is how it's going to be week in and week out, especially with for Andy sure. Dalton. So, yeah, we'll see I what agree. happens. But I don't know. It's just, it's, it's not good. It's yeah, really not it's good. It's kind of a wait and see game until Justin gets a chance. Yeah. But just that week one performance just leaves such a bitter taste in my mouth. For sure. Um outside of that, I mean, you know, the rest of the NFL, everyone's just getting started. I wouldn't say there's too much there's a lot of quarterback situations going on, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh well we'll get more in depth uh next week, I would mm-hmm. say, in the NFL. Uh yeah. once everything cools down and settles and you could get more of a sample size right because one week it's like you know yeah exactly things happen <laughs> <laughs> um outside of that i think we're good what do you think yeah i agree is there anything you want to add or? uh no i can't really think of much to add that's fine <laughs> All right, well, then, thanks for having me on i think what you guys are doing here is awesome and i can't wait to see where it takes you guys appreciate it oh yeah, real no quick problem. um you're starting up a podcast you think right Possibly. yeah do you want to talk yeah. about that for a second um, yeah me and a buddy from an old job of mine we've been thinking about starting a podcast i mean a lot of people think about starting a podcast but just getting started really is is the thing that we're looking to do um really just talk about life that's what we did at work so we're just gonna uh hop on a podcast talk about life and see where it takes us and do you think that's gonna be like through moraine related yeah i was i was talking to the librarian over there um she said that you're more than welcome to rent the equipment out um uh, do it at Moraine, p- uh, publish it where you want to. So mm-hmm. if we get in the newspaper here with you guys, that'd be awesome. Hopefully we get some viewers there, mm-hmm. yeah. and that'd be great. Do you guys have a name for the podcast yet? No. Or no? Okay. no, we still got to brainstorm <laughs> a little bit. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, but exactly. you guys uh, be looking out for that podcast in the future. Uh, Colin Bolger is the guest. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, you guys will be able to find this episode on the Glacier, and the library will also post it on their SoundCloud. Um, thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Peace.